Hey folks, good to see you. My name's Tom Short. I'm going to be preaching on your campus this week, and I'd like to introduce myself, tell what I'm going to do, and give you a few tips on how you can be involved there as well. I've been doing this since 1980, preaching on over 100 campuses throughout the United States. It's where you find me on most school days throughout the year, throughout the school year for quite a long time now. And during that time, we've seen a lot of things happen. A lot of people have come to Christ. A lot of Christians have been really encouraged and strengthened in their faith. And a lot of non-Christians who didn't come to Christ really reconsidered their, their unbelief. And who knows where they went in the, uh, in the years to come. Our goal to sow the seed, to love people, to pray for people. We have a job, and then God has a job. And so I'll be out there on your campus probably about from noon till three, four, five in the afternoon for quite a time. Why do we do this? Well, you know, preaching, public preaching was the most common form of evangelism in the New Testament. Jesus did it. John the Baptist did it. Paul did it. Peter did it. A guy named Apollos did it. All kinds of people publicly proclaimed the gospel. And indeed, we're called to do this. We're called to go take the gospel outside of the church. Instead of only expecting people to come to us with their questions, we're instructed to go to them. And so what I do, my slogan is taking it to their turf. I like to go where people can feel like, like I'm in their territory. So what's that mean? They can feel comfortable. They can interact. They can say what they want. They can dress how they want. They can yell at me if they want. They can cuss at me if they want because they're not in my church building. I'm taking it to them. I'm putting myself in an uncomfortable position rather than expecting them to put themselves in that uncomfortable position. We're going to the people. And when I preach, I usually start by proclaiming the gospel, but it's not long before people start asking me all kinds of questions, particularly on the campuses today. How do you know the Bible's true? How do you even know there's a God? Uh, hasn't science disproven the Bible? What about other religions? What about, you know, the other moral or immoral lifestyles? What do you think about this, Tom? What do you think about that, Tom? It, it doesn't take long. It usually becomes a time of a lot of interaction, questions, answers. People put, put out their ideas, and we interact. That's what makes what I do interesting. I don't know if people would be stop and listen if all I did was lecture. But if they see me taking questions, interacting, responding to people— that's what people find interesting. That's what I think you'll find interesting. You'll probably hear me addressing questions that people are asking that maybe you've never heard a Christian leader address before. Maybe you've never heard anyone even talk about it before from a biblical perspective. And so when you come, and I hope you will be out there as much as you can be, because it will be a learning and a growing experience for you. I think you'll understand more of our faith how to answer the questions and objections we have. You'll understand, uh, you'll, you'll understand more of our, our, the biblical perspective. And I think you'll gain boldness and courage. I realize on the college campus, sometimes you can feel really alone. You can feel like no one agrees with you or thinks what you think. And uh, I have found usually me taking that bold stand and, and being willing to take any question that comes my way. Lots of times that's a real encouragement to the believers out there. And so expect some interaction. When I get that, I get some questions that are, you know, people hate me and they're just trying to trip me up or they make me look bad. And I get other questions that are so sincere from the heart. You can't believe that people are publicly being so vulnerable and exposing themselves, the questions they have, the pain, the hurt they have in front of other people. We get all types. And so... Be ready for quite a good day. I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to really use it. But let me give you some tips on how you can be involved and how you can help this time be successful. Number one, I want to encourage you, follow me on, on social media and promote me to your friends. Tell them I'm going to be there. Tell them uh, I'll be out on the campus. Give them the time. Uh, tell them you're going to be there. Encourage others to come. When I'm there tomorrow, when I'm there this week, Go ahead and video tip me, post it on your TikTok, post it on Instagram, post it on Facebook, wherever you're at, Twitter, wherever. Post and say, Tom the Preacher is out on our campus right now, and, and it's really interesting, or I can't, someone asked him this, he had a great answer, whatever. Post some videos, put it up, follow me on your social media, 
whether it's TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, something I'm not even aware of. Um, my Just search Tom the Preacher, all one word, Tom the Preacher, and you'll find me. Go ahead and follow, and then look at some of my videos. Forward, you can start right now forwarding them on to others, and then tomorrow I'll take some video and, and, uh, and forward that on to others. This will help. This will help spread the word. I'm counting on you. I don't have any advertising. You are it. I'm counting on you using your social media platforms to help get the word out that I will be there, okay? Second thing, what happens when you're actually there at the preaching? I'll give you four tips. Number one, allow me to interact with people. Don't be surprised if people challenge me. Don't be surprised if they ask me questions. Don't be surprised if they're ganging up on me. I can handle it, okay? You don't have to bail me out. That often is what, again, what makes what I do interesting. It makes people want to stop and see what's going on. I wish we could just stand out there and tell people Jesus loves them and get a big crowd of people. But lots of time what, what is interests them is saying, oh, I wonder how he's going to answer that. And they're interested in how I will answer it. Keep in mind, when someone is challenging me, I'm speaking to the whole crowd. I'm not just answering the one person, and I'm aware of how's the whole crowd hearing. Did they hear the question? Do they know what it is? Lots of times when believers try and get in conversations with the people who challenge me or speak to me, it's well-intentioned, but it ends up kind of hurting and, and sometimes can kill the whole, the whole crowd and cause others who are bystanders to walk away. Remember, we're trying to reach all those people. I see them. Lots of times you don't. You can get caught up in just someone who's talking. So allow me to do that interacting. That's important. Now, that being said, the second point, though, is important. I cast the net. I sow the seed. But you've got to pull in the net. You've got to, you've got to bring the people in. And so I want to encourage you, go out, listen, learn, grow. But I want to also encourage you, you may want, you may, God may use you to lead a person to Christ tomorrow or to invite a person to your church or small group or, or something, and they will come. God may lead you and use you to establish that contact. I, I generate the interest. You've got to pull in the nets. Now, how do you do that? I'd say number, point number three here, talk to open people. Talk to open people. Not that, you know, there'll be people out there who want to argue. I guarantee it. People will always want to argue. That's, those aren't the open people. Those aren't the people who will, who will want to, you'll want to get into your church. There are people, I guarantee you, there'll be people standing there who are interested, who, but they're not talking. They're just watching. Some of them, who knows, they could have had a friend die this weekend. They could have had a parents get a divorce. They could have had a flunk, flunk to test. They could have had a, a, a bad breakup or a bad date or any kinds of things that, that are causing them to feel wounded and they're open, but they're not going to be the ones to speak up. You've got to spot them. You can see it in their eyes lots of times. They're really listening. That's who you want to talk to. You want to talk to people who will be receptive to you. Leave the arguers to me. I'm serious. I can handle them. Leave those people to me. It's, it's a, often is a distraction and it'll be a waste of your time to try and persuade those people when there's so many open people who will be around. Now, they might not be there right within 10 minutes of me starting, but throughout the day, Trust me, there will be open, receptive people that will be available to talk. That's who, pray, God, lead me to an open person. Lead me to a person who will listen. Lead me to a person who I can really have an effect in their life. That's who you want to talk to. Now, here's my advice, though. When that type of conversation happens, and I'd encourage you to have an opening conversation, like say something like, hi, my name's Bill. You know, I'm with, um, I'm with the group that brought Tom to campus today. I couldn't help but notice you looked really interested. I'm curious, what do you think about his message? What do you think about Jesus? What do you think about God? Are you a believer in God and believer in Jesus? Do you have any questions about what, he, what we're doing here today? You can ask questions like that. And if they do, if they don't, don't be offended. But if they do have questions like to talk further, then here's what I suggest you say, do. Invite that, per se, invite that person away from the crowd. Go onto the outskirts. Go onto the outskirts and say, and simply, how do you do it? Say, you know, Tom can be kind of loud and I can get distracted hearing him. 
Um, what do you say we move over here so we can talk to one another and I can interact with you without being distracted? And go ahead and move away from the crowd. I find that people, that's when people come to Christ. That's when people open up. When there's a lot of noise around, it's harder. Get them away privately. Get them away. You don't have to go far. Go 50 feet away, 75 feet away, and be able to talk to them privately and ask them questions, listen to them, share your testimony, share the gospel, invite them to your church, your small group, whatever, your meetings. And that's when you can make good, good uh, progress. Now, with those people, make sure you get your contact information. Share your phone, offer them your phone number. If, say, you can text me anytime or call me if you want to talk further and, and, uh, and ask for their number and say, can I remind you of events or can I, it would be okay if I text or call and remind you of any things go, that we're going to be doing that I think you'd be interested in. These are ways to keep in touch with people. You, you, we're sowing seed. We're cultivating ground. We're watering the seed. You want to be able to keep up with it. So these are some things you can do. Okay, these are some things you can do. And if we do this, we'll have a pretty good day, I think. But there's one other real important thing, obviously, and that is to pray. And so I want to ask you to pray and maybe take a moment right now that we pray. And you keep praying, Father, that God will use this time. Here you go. You ready? Father in heaven, we thank you for the, the scripture, the word of God, the gospel. I pray that this week as it goes out on my campus, on our campus, that you would draw many, many people to listen. You draw people who will be receptive. We pray, Father, you deliver us from evil men who just want to disrupt the time and, and who, who make it, turn it into a circus or something. Bring open and receptive people. Bring people with good questions. Bring people who've been hurting. Bring people who are looking for answers. We ask, Father, that your word was go forth and find good soil and bear fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. We pray that obstacles and that are raised up against the knowledge of God might be torn down in people's minds. We pray, Lord, that, that false ideas might be exposed and people might turn from them to believe the truth. And we ask that there be fruit born, true salvations. We pray, Lord, that backslidden Christians would come back to you. We pray, pray believers would be encouraged to be strong and courageous. We pray, Lord, that believers would understand our faith better. And we pray for unbelievers, Lord, that, that they would be uh, drawn to listen and reconsider their unbelief and come to faith in Jesus Christ. We trust you for this. We pray for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, Jesus said, go and preach the gospel to all creation. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And in 2, Tim, 2, Peter, excuse me, 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 and 2, Paul says to young Timothy, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God. And by his appearing in his kingdom, Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Preach the word is what he says. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. That's what we'll be doing on your campus this week. I look forward to seeing you. Uh, again, check me on the social media. Just search Tom the Preacher. You can find my website, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, daily YouTube devotional I do on YouTube, Facebook, all those things you can find it. Subscribe, follow, whatever you do. Pass that on to your friends. Let's help spread the word, and let's have a great, great time in your campus. Okay? God bless you. Love you guys. We'll see you, we'll see you this week. Bye-bye.